The Fox Broadcasting Company launched on October 9, 1986, and has since grown to become one of the most popular television networks, hosting such hits as The Simpsons, That 70s Show, and American Idol. But unfortunately, it's gotten something of a reputation for brutally killing up and coming shows before they get a chance to attract an audience. You have your family guys, where post-cancellation success caused them to give the show a second chance. You have your Futuramas and your Fireflies, where the shows became popular enough to continue in other media. But then you have those shows that just didn't seem to get a break at all, and faded into relative obscurity, with only its most devoted fan base keeping up awareness of it at all. This is the story of Wonderfalls. Wonder Falls is a quirky little comedy that aired on Fox for a whopping total of four episodes in the spring of 2004 before the network pulled the plug. Yeah, way to give the series a chance, guys. Fortunately, the DVD box set contained the other nine episodes that didn't air in its original run. I always try to make it a habit to wear a t-shirt related to my video, but since Wonder Falls is so obscure, as you can see, I'm kind of blank. Wait, I got it. Eh? Wonder Falls centers around the lives of the Tyler family. Karen Tyler is the award-winning author of several best-selling travel guides. She resides in Niagara Falls, New York with her husband, noted area physician, Dr. Darren Tyler. Their eldest daughter, Sharon, is a respected immigration attorney. Son, Aaron, is currently pursuing his doctorate in comparative religion. Jay, a daughter, is 24. Uh Surrounded by the accomplishments of her successful and similarly named family, Jay is something of an outcast. Despite having a philosophy degree from Brown, Jay lives in a trailer park and works as a retail clerk in the titular Wonder Falls, a Niagara Falls souvenir shop, although saying she does any actual work is probably a bit of a stretch. Hi, which one Not on the clock. Jay is fairly content in the mediocrity of her life, but her life does hit something akin to rock bottom when the high school age mouth breather she trained becomes her boss. And then things get a little weird. Don't give her money back. Hello, and it's not just a little wax line with a smooth face either. I love you. Don't squeeze the Sherman. Get off your ass. Have a pancake. Take one down, pass it around. 88 bottles of beer on the wall. 88 bottles of beer on the wall. 88 bottles of beer. This is what cults do, you know. It seems that no matter where Jay goes, there's always going to be an inanimate animal that starts telling her what to do, wearing her down until she relents and does what it says. If I do this, will you shut up? And despite her best efforts to remain unattached to the world at large, the cryptic messages she follows always end up helping people somehow, even though it's never at all obvious at first. Just to clarify, let's take a look at how it goes down in the first episode. The lion tells her not to give a bitchy customer her money back, but she does, and the lady's purse is immediately stolen. The lion then tells Jay to ask Thomas, the delivery guy, why he doesn't wear his wedding ring anymore, which leads to some repressed memories and fountain wishing. See a penny? Pick it up. Jay fishes out the quarter, which gets away from her and leads her to a trash can where she finds the purse. She tries to return the purse, but that goes badly, leaving her to be rescued by her sister Sharon, which also goes badly. So the lion tells Jay to hook up Sharon and Thomas, but it turns out that Sharon's a lesbian, and Thomas is allergic to peanuts. There's an emergency tracheotomy, revelation as to why Thomas's wife left him in the first place, a sponge bath by a hot nurse, and all is suddenly right with the world. Well, until next time. So, throughout the series, Jay gets into wacky, fun situations like helping Rue McClanahan go over Niagara Falls in a barrel, even if it's just her ashes, convincing Eddie K. Thomas that he's not fat, Pat, bringing a nun back to the convent after enduring a botched exorcism, smuggling the family housekeeper out of Canada, and even stealing an old woman's disability checks. Well, that all works out in the end. And all the while, she has to avoid her tightly knit family's attempts at togetherness and their concerns over her increasingly erratic behavior, especially from her theologian brother Aaron, who was the first to discover Jay talking to inanimate objects. He becomes obsessed with proving to others that his sister is crazy to the point that all it does is convince others that he's the crazy one. Jay is also the sole owner of Sharon's sexuality secret, something Sharon goes to great lengths to hide from the rest of her conservative family. Her uptight nature and obsession with success often cause her to feel alienated from her other siblings. Is this because we like each other better than we like you? But 
Although considering all the times the instructions from the animals get Jay in trouble with the law, it's probably very advantageous to have a sister who's a lawyer. Of course, no show would be complete without a feisty black woman as the best friend. I, I am a woman of color. We just do that, alright? In this case, it's Mahandra McGinty who seems to be on the same career path as Jay, working as a cocktail waitress at the Barrel, which is apparently the only restaurant slash bar in the entire town as it seems to literally be the only place to hang out. However, to some, the Barrel isn't just a place to hang out, but a place to live, as evidenced by the new bartender Eric. Poor Eric is living proof that All it takes is one bad day. to throw someone's life completely off kilter. Her name's Heidi. She's my college sweetheart. Married in Jersey. Honeymoon in Niagara. It was like a fairy tale. Until I caught her with a bellman in our room. Sweet. So, Eric has a wife. His cheating wife? The one who broke his heart? So, a damaged boy with a heart of gold meets a loner girl who only does good things because she's coerced to. I wonder where they're going with this. I'm almost numb enough to start something on the rebound. What do you say? I may be clinically insane. You might want to hold out for someone a little more stable. I don't think that'd be as interesting. Oh, it's gonna be one of those will-they-won't-they they scenarios. After Jay and Eric help save a Russian mail-order bride from the 13-year-old boy who ordered her, vicariously imposing their own budding relationship issues on it... Peter, for your own good, don't go after a woman who isn't interested. They'll just make you crazy. It's not advice. It's thinly veiled subtext. Whether she's interested or not isn't the point. So you think maybe she is? Shut up! Jay and Eric finally decide to date. Convinced that she's going to end up destroying what's left of Eric's heart, she quickly breaks it off, just as his wife comes back to Niagara. His cheating wife? The one who broke his heart? Yeah! Cheating wife! You know, I can't wait to meet this bitch. I got a few choice words for... This is Heidi. Do state. Oh, my goodness. I'm a vegetarian, and even I love those pants. Oh, this frickin'. No. No, 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 no. You were a slut and what you did was wrong. Call me, please. Eric is finally over Heidi and convinced that he wants to be with Jay, and Jay is finally over her fear of commitment and wants to be with Eric. But there's just one little problem. Mend what is broken. Yes, apparently the animals want Eric and Heidi to get back together. So in this mini arc, Jay admits everything to Aaron and gives every single animal to him, but he takes them and creates a shrine to them in his room, hoping they'll talk to him. Erin and Mahandra start a secret relationship that she's not at all comfortable with. You're like a brother to me. So, I make love like a black man? Not that kind of brother, you idiot. And since Jay can't bring herself to tell Eric how she really feels, Eric decides to remarry Heidi, destroying any chance of Eric and Jay getting back together. Oh, but it gets worse. Due to her lashing out against the animals for ruining her life, Jay is forced to see a shrink, Dr. Ron. But she decides to start listening to the animals again once they convince her that Heidi is planning to kill Eric. She busts into their hotel room in order to save him from her, but it turns out that Heidi was just trying to slip him a male potency drug. It's a trick. I don't think it's a trick. Well, how? Oh. Unfortunately, those nasty pronouns got in the way, as Jay didn't realize the animals were trying to protect Dr. Ron from a crazed former patient. Just before Eric and Heidi leave town for good, though, Jay manages to patch things up with Eric and arrange one final meeting with him. Unfortunately, Wonder Falls chooses that moment to play host to a bank robber on the lam. Eric figures out what's wrong and brings in the police, forcing the robber to have to escape. And now, finally, the animals decide to be specific. There's a hidden door in the bathroom. Let him go. They steal a truck and are about to leave when Jay's accidentally saved by Heidi, of all people. Wonder Falls is safe, Aaron and Mahandra finally let the relationship be known, and it looks like Eric and Heidi are gone for good. But wait... Well, what about your wife? My ex-wife? And I'm single. If anyone were to be interested. Sign here. But I could only give you store credit. Good. Another reason for me to come back. If the world isn't turning, your heart won't return anyone in a feeling you have. So take... Oh, that's... that's great. I... I wonder what's gonna happen to them now. Damn it, damn it, damn it! This show was great with amazing writing and interesting characters! It's no wonder Fox cancelled it immediately. Either that or they have a deep-seated resentment against shows with involvement from Jewel State and Tim Minear. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Firefly.